Hey, Masters of the Universe fans, Scott Torguru Knightlick here, the brand manager of uh, Masters of the Universe Classics. And this was kind of the last figure that I was directly involved with and had a lot of ups and downs, both with the fandom and with me when it was released. Uh, so let's kind of jump in because this is a polarizing figure, I guess, in the line, maybe more so at the time than it is now. Now it's kind of cool to have him, but I guess uh, <laughs> with so much swirling around, there's definitely a lot to unpack here. All right, so first off, well, to be blunt, this is a figure that a lot of fans weren't asking for or were asking not to be made, which is kind of interesting, especially I think when it when the, a, a leak list showed up and people realized he was coming. A big reason that people didn't want him is because they felt he was taking the place of other more demanded characters. A lot of people wanted the villains from Filmation, now that we'd finally gotten the Filmation right, so characters like Batros or Lord Mask that hadn't been made yet were in high demand. So they have come first. And while yes, that is a valid point, a more valid point is actually that we were saving them for 2016. The whole idea is to populate each year with fan-demanded characters, and doing all of them in one year means you have less. And so that was why they didn't end up in 15, is because they were actually anchors for 2016. And for those of you saying, well, wait a minute, wasn't 15 supposed to be the last year of the line? Or even if you remember this, this was a whole thing we did in 2014 that we announced that come 2015, Masters of the Universe Classics as a brand was going away. Noting that, you know, all toy lines should end this way, you know you've collected them all. Well, it, it, it wasn't, besides being a cool parody of a uh, Game of Thrones ad at the same time, which really shows how dated this was, this wasn't meant to be the end of 6-inch. It was more of what I was calling an organic reset. In other words, this was a chance for us to give fans who had been collecting classics for years the opportunity, if they wanted to, to get off the bus, if you will. But... For those who wanted to stay on, or for new fans, it was now a way to reissue main characters again, while not forcing older fans to take them because they had the opportunity, as I said, to kind of exit the line. But the new brand was going to be the same product inside. It was just going to have new packaging and new branding. So, you know, it was sort of a favor for old fans who wanted to get off and also a way to now, again, we could redo main characters, which is so important to keeping lines going, without feeling like we were punishing older fans who were who already had this character because they were already released in the subscription. And honestly, I didn't like the idea of putting a character in the subscription who had already been there before, sort of, you know, making people buy them again, since the subscription was, not you know, an all-in blind leap. So, with that being said, it became Massachusetts Chronicles. No, it's not even listed there because the name wasn't on there yet. And as we transitioned from Classics to Chronicles, noting you would still be have the same acronym, we wanted to use a figure that was very symbolic of everything that had kind of been and was and were. And, well, much like we started the line with not He-Man very deliberately, right? We did not just do He-Man at San Diego Comic-Con, which today would probably be what is done. We went with King Grayskull because it was a link to 2000X and to the possibilities of what this line and brand could be. That it was, you know, going to hit new, new, uh, new boundaries. Which at the time, you know, I mean now, all these characters that have been classics have sort of been even incorporated into the brand. Concept characters, promotional characters, characters that are actually sketches of Conan the Barbarian and shouldn't be in the line, but that's a YouTube video for another time. So... How did we end up with Hero 2, with this guy uh, packed with blue pants and a blue vest, which is a sticking point with me? Well, let's kind of jump in here. So, first off, there are multiple heroes. There's the one that we've already made a figure of, and there's also multiple heroes, son of He-Man. This being the more maybe well-known version, because it showed up on the internet as uh, it was a... Uh, concept for an animated series that was going to have He-Man defeating Skeletor and then recruiting a whole new Masters of the Universe group, and then Skeletor was going to get his new group, and they were all going to go after He-Man and his son, who was going to be known as Hero. Now, in, there's a, in another concept, this was Hero, son of He-Man, and you might be saying, well, wait a minute, that looks like New Adventures He-Man. Well, you're right. In this version which is completely different from that other one that showed up on the internet, it was essentially all of the characters had the New, Ad New Adventures names, meaning the original names, like Icarus, not Flipshot, 
and they were all the bad guys for Hero, son of He-Man, whose real name was going to be Dare. He was going to be adopted son of... Uh, no, no, the other one was adopted. This one was... He was the son of He-Man and Tila. It's, even I mix it up, because they're sort of similar but different. Well, essentially, this all of this work just went and got turned into new adventures. And when I left Mattel, I got a call from the new brand manager uh, who asked me where this material was. And I said, I left it very specifically in this cubby on in my cubicle. And he was like, oh, shoot. The cleaning crew came in and threw all of that away. I'm like, no, 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 because that's like the only copy of that version of... Son of He-Man, I, I mean, at least I know of, was that pitch book, which I, I had at my desk and I left with all the other materials. I did an inner, well, I'm sorry, I left the pitch book with some He-Man.org folks at San Diego Comic-Con years ago and they they uh, got uh, they did a whole read out loud. And unfortunately, He-Man.org is down, so even that's gone too. So kind of all of the reference for this version is, well, more or less, kind, well, <laughs> I don't know if it's lost forever, but until someone else finds a copy of this, I'm, I cannot believe that, yeah, the cleaning crew just, like, tossed all of my material. Like, I left everything. All right, that's not important. The point being is the design for the original hero, Son of He-Man, lives on in New Adventures, and it was really supposed to look like this. It was going to be a brunette Son of He-Man in the uh, silver armor, which is how we did the figure. So this is what the original pitch book and what then turned into New Adventures. They basically just made the armor gold and gave him a helmet. And now it was not going to be the sun, but it was just going to be the New Adventures of He-Man. So all that work that went into creating characters and a backstory just, you know, got used for New Adventures. The, again, more common known version, which has been on the internet for years, was Dare, son of He-Man, who again was this, this jungle kind of kid who had a pet bird. And then... When we said we were doing Dare, Hero 2, a lot of people wanted to see this figure. And we did want to get to this as well. We wanted to get to every version of every main character. The reason we didn't lead with it is because it would have required a new buck. But we did plan for that specifically by having the civilian version of Dare look like a repaint of Prince Adam from 2000X. We can get a twofer. Get it? How we thought ahead? So it was all about getting a teen buck, and then we'd be able to do all of these teen characters. So this hero was not meant to be the only stab at this character. And again, just like we started off the line with King Grayskull, this figure was ending Masters of the Universe Classics until it became Masters of the Universe Chronicles. We had paid homage to so much. We had done things from you know, the under, undeveloped 1987-1988 line that would have the other version of Hero, so the names got reused which was this dude who eventually got released by Super 7 on a vintage card, which I think is awesome that they did this. I just really love that that exists because we only knew it from the catalog or from we did a classics figure of this. This was one of the first Comic-Con figures we did and, he, and doing now Hero 2. That was Hero 1, Hero 2, kind of like how there's Flash 1 and Flash 2 and Green Lantern 1 and 2. We figured we'd just use kind of the DC Comics numbering system to differentiate them because they were both hero and the mini comics also explain how you know he's you know naming himself after him and he actually gets uh so hero <laughs> with the blue pants gets trained by hero one now all of this is kind of covered again in in the bio and we wanted to make it clear which version this was while leaving the door open to do the other versions and the mini comics were really all about kind of trying to establish ties between continuity and new possibilities for characters to do as toys. So, you know, we, we showed the transformation for, of Dare to Hero, and again with the silver armor originally developed for the original pitch that became New Adventures. So there was this look, call it the, um, you know, called the New Adventures look for, that became Dare, Hero 2. And then there is a completely separate look, which was also deliberately done in the mini comics, which is this version, which is more reminiscent of the, which, well, which is the, the chest harness and uh, that he, he wore in the, the other concept. And we incorporated this again into the mini comics. Here you see Hero 1 training Hero 2. It's a whole like time travel thing. Go read the mini comics. They're really awesome. And there's plenty of videos on this channel about them. But you know, here you have a quintessential moment of you know, both heroes working together uh, in Preternia. So 
these were the two figures that you were meant to get from this package. But the one on the right was a bonus figure for long-term fans, and this wasn't promoted at all. And yeah, it's kind of a sticking point to mine because I left all the plans for this and it was just totally blown out the window. And they released the figure like this, which is blatantly wrong. It's the pants from one version and the chest armor from another. Never does he wear this. When he wears the blue pants, he has the silver armor. When he has uh, barbarian furry shorts, he wears this vest. So this version, and or rather the version with the, uh, the furry pants, again, was a payoff for long-term fans. If you had Vicron, right, the, the version based on the original He-Man trio that we released at San Diego Comic-Con, the version in the middle, the Barbarian, you'll notice Axel very deliberately drew Hero in the mini-comic with these gauntlets. So you're supposed to take the uh, head off of this figure, plug it onto Vicron, put the vest on, we still owed you the cod piece, which was planned to be released in a later figure, but this was building the other version of Hero. We would probably still do the teen version, but that was down the line. It was very much like how Marvel Legends, when they did Shadow King, I mean, this is after the fact, but they did the same thing. They never sold this figure, but you could cobble it together if you were a long-term fan. So if you had pieces from, uh, I think, Space Venom, and then you got the head released with Professor X, and the body was from a Spider-Man Build-A-Figure version of Kingpin. So if you had all of these pieces, you could put them together and get a really awesome, quote-unquote, free Shadow King figure. That was the idea. So this buck plus Hero 2's head plus that vest and a to-come cod piece, that was their belt piece that was going to go around, that would be the blue piece, would get you your sort of bonus Preternia Hero 2, and that was this version. So that was going to be a whole part of the marketing plan, and it was, you know, because again, this was the last figure, and we wanted it to pay off for long term fans. It made sense. So this is what was supposed to be in the package, if you will, was Hero 2 with the silver armor, because as established in the mini comics, when he has the silver armor, he wears the blue pants. And yeah, call it, I don't know, it's just one of those things that really, uh, you know, I don't mean to sound sour, but they packaged him wrong, with the wrong armor on. And by doing that, I don't know, maybe nobody cares, but to me, it was like, that was like, ah, no! It, it just threw off so much, they even did the cross-sell like that, which, you know, cross-sells are usually the definitive version of a character, and he's in this mix-match version, and... You know, yeah, again, I don't mean to be sour grapes, but it just drove me crazy. Otherwise, he's awesome, and I love this figure. And once you cobble him correctly together, he kicks butt. So glad we did him. And he was a figure for his time. It was great to end the line like that.